going on everybody this is DK Dynamite and today we're going to be talking about what's next for MW3 Zombies, how there's actually more coming to season 2 plus a bonus event, definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also as a reminder there's plenty of brand new coverage going up over on Adetonated.com for those out there that want additional content in regards to multiplayer zombies and even Warzone, plus there's plenty of tweets every single hour on Adetonated's Twitter. Now although it's a bit ironic that we're getting a zombie theme season for season 2, despite zombies not getting any actual content day 1, there still is a really good amount of content that is zombies focused for multiplayer and warzone which i've been covering of course in several separate videos today's video though is just talking about modern warfare 3 zombies now something that we went ahead and put out over on detonated is that season 2 reloaded which is going to be reportedly march 6 will mark three months without a big zombie update hopefully the content issue is going to be a one-off type of season 2 problem because it would be heartbreaking to see the momentum that mwz had initially day one back in november and see that just fizzle away way as soon as the second season comes out it just really would break my heart but here's the thing about that right as we discussed on the recent episode of the bombshell podcast with the current rumor right now the Treyarch has stepped away from mwz at least beginning with i want to say season one they just put out that season one update and then had to go all hands on deck for black ops 2024 <laughs> Now before we continue, I just wanted to remind you about MitchCactus.com where you can get assistance grinding camos, nukes, or schematics in MW3. These guys do not use unlock tools or any bannable methods and will actually help you play the game. Mitch Cactus is also supported by Trustpilot with over 10,000 verified reviews. You can use Go Dynamite for a limited time to save 5% off your order. With that rumor that now High Moon and Infinity Ward, possibly even other studios, are now taking over with MW3 Zombies, we could just hope that Treyarch passed the baton to them and laid out an agenda or some type of outline for the rest of 2024, indicating that there is still a bunch more content planned for MWZ, they just won't be the ones developing it, it'll be the other studios. Maybe right now is a bit of an adjustment period following the holiday break they all had and then devs getting back into the office, maybe it's a big adjustment period where as High Moon or Infinity Ward are transitioning, transitioning into working on zombies now they just needed a little bit more time to get things off the ground hence why on february 7th we're not getting anything for mw3 zombies but as we also talked about what would you rather have right you want to have two mediocre zombie experiences or one that started off really strong but now has to be sacrificed in order to ensure that black ops 2024 which is coming out less than a year from now really starts off swinging with potentially two round based maps at launch and the possibility of onslaught outbreak and other round based maps later in 2025 i think as of right now people could probably agree that for treyarch's actual new call of duty which will be the first with a four-year development cycle that should be the game they fully focus on even though in a perfect world we should be able to see enough dev teams kind of split the work up and ensure solid experiences for both mw3 and the next black ops but i will say i wish treyarch was allowed to put out a statement saying hey you know we're gonna go all hands on deck for our next call of duty project we're gonna pass mwz on to high moon or infinity war so please be patient with them as they adjust to that transition and they will be coming back swinging with some really exciting content i just wish they could have made a statement like that but we don't live in a perfect world now i do want to mention that at least with the launch window of mw zombies season two there will be weekly challenges you can do obviously in mp warzone or zombies and that will all lead till was at week eight for season two which is going to be i think deep into march allowing you to go ahead and unlock a really cool inferno looking dragon universal camo but there's also something that i believe is warzone related according to the roadmap but there is something called the hunt and you have to kill zombies to unlock modern warfare zombie items every week hunt down new special high value zombie targets collecting their skulls and bones for exclusive undead rewards there are apparently four rewards as a part of this event but it looks like this hvt can only be found in fortune's keep which is a bit unfortunate because it would have been perfect if the hvt could be found in multiple modes i mean for a zombies theme season i think it'd be cool if you could see the hvt in urzikstan or in fortune's keep zombies or hey even in let's say uh, one of the multiplayer maps that would be cool if the hvt could be found anywhere because there's only four rewards that you can unlock from this event which probably means you're going to get one reward per week for a total of four weeks and like i mentioned the roadmap does show that this hvt is in the war zone section of season two so that's something that we don't know too much about but we'll learn a little bit more about on february 7th since since this is a day one event i'll be making a separate video talking more about the zombie content within fortune's keep 
I don't want to really focus on that here in this video since this is just talking about MWZ, but I figured I'd bring up that HVT type of event because even if you guys don't like Warzone, it probably won't be that much of a struggle for people to just jump in, kill an HVT, collect some skulls and bones, and then hop out to get whatever MWZ reward that you're going to end up unlocking. Now, it also mentions you're unlocking Mono Warfare zombie items, which has me thinking that they're not just zombies themed cosmetics like calling cards, weapon stickers, charms, but possibly actual bonuses like pack a punch crystals, ether tools, maybe even a wonder weapon case. Sounds like these are going to be rewards that benefit you while playing MWZ, not just cosmetic rewards themed around the mode. But there's something that I haven't seen too much discussion about, which a lot of folks actually missed, and that's within one of the blog post images for season two zombies, and the fact that you could see a pedestal in the background, which appears to be very similar to the pedestal we saw back during season one, when we ended up getting the update that allowed us to go into the dark ether through the act four mission. In that act four mission, you ended up seeing some hints for specific items you needed to find over on Urzikstan. So upon finishing the act mission and going back to Urzikstan in a separate game, there was then a fetch quest to go ahead and collect four separate items, which was a pretty lengthy quest in my opinion to go ahead and get each of these items. And once you got the items themselves, you're able to place them on pedestals towards the tier three area of the map. And upon doing that, you then unlock the dark ether rift to go back into Al Mazra or excuse me, Al Bagra Fortress. And once you went ahead and did that, then you were able to go and do three contracts in the dark ether, unlock three new schematics, and also unlock the elder sigil version of that dark ether, which is a hardcore mode for that same space. And then if you go into the hardcore mode, do the three contracts again, you'd get three more schematics by going ahead and completing those. I think there was a pretty high chance you'd get those, I think during launch window in the reward rifts. But then even outside of that, over in Erzikstan, there was a red worm Easter egg added in requiring you to find four USB sticks and waiting until the very end of the match for the dark ether storm to then hit the machines you inserted the USBs in and you trigger a red worm boss fight. What I think is going on here is the exact same formula for season two, which people out there might argue is going to be a bit repetitive to see since it'll likely be the same deal. You play the new act mission that's getting added to act four, which takes you to the new dark ether rift that they talked about in the blog post. And then while you're in there, we'll end up getting hints for items we need to find either in Urzikstan or somewhere. We're going to find the items, place them on pedestals, which will unlock a permanent rift that you can go into to take us to this new dark ether space that I'm sure is also going to require the use of sigils of some sort, maybe new ones or the same ones that maybe we already have in our inventories. I doubt there's going to be an elder version of this new dark ether space though, considering there's only three schematics that are being added in season two. If there were six, then I would say they probably split it up three for the regular version, three for an elder hardcore version of this new dark ether space. But then the question is outside of that, will there then be an Easter egg equivalent to the red worm where there's more to do on Urzikstan that may trigger an additional boss fight? That's what's unknown right now, but it does look like we're going to get a very similar formula to what we saw in season one. But more specifically for the new act four mission, it does look like we're going to be getting a continuation to the Operation Deadbolt narrative, which got beautifully followed up on with the season one cinematic cutscene. So no doubt in my mind, we're going to get a brand new cinematic for finishing this act mission. That's something to look forward to hopefully every season till the end of the year is getting a nice new beautiful cutscene by completing whatever new act mission we get through the brand new season. It does mention new secrets await in the exclusion zone and tensions are heightened this time as Terminus outcomes have followed your teams into the rift. So this act mission will take place in the new dark ether rift, similar to what we saw again in season one. So Ravana will be guiding us and you will battle alongside the rest of your squad, completing a series of dangerous tasks as you find your way out of the dark ether before it's too late. So I'm assuming that we're going to have a very similar system to the other act mission where you're guided through a pretty easy set of tasks. Maybe you trigger a boss fight, hopefully not another worm because people are going to be upset about that as well. And then you're going to get out and then that will count as a completion for the mission. Now they do tease that a mysterious entity will make her presence known to Ravenoff and the team while they frantically search for an exit. So that could be Samantha Maxis. I'm really curious to see what ends up happening with the follow-up to that narrative as she did go into the Dark Ether at the end of Forsaken in Black Ops Cold War. I'm just curious though what the contracts are going to be in this new Act 4 mission. We'll probably get a hint as to what they are before we end up going back into the Rift while using a sigil later on. They just won't be the same objectives that we have when going in through the Act mission. But it does say earn coveted rewards, follow cryptic clues, and complete timed tasks all while facing down the largest infested stronghold yet seen. But as far as the schematics go, they're nothing too groundbreaking like what we saw for Season 1. I mean, a golden armor plate, the ether blade, those are some pretty revolutionary schematics that could really change the game. The ones we're getting in Season 2 don't seem like they're all that useful, especially for going into the Dark Ether, but it's also unclear if the new Dark Ether Rift will be Tier 4 zombies, will it be as hard as a Tier 5, or will it just be toned down to like a Tier 3 type of experience? It's a little unknown now, but we are getting the Mags of Holding schematic, which is essentially a stock option if you guys are 
familiar with that gobble gum from Black Ops 3. As they said, who has time to reload? Not you if you've activated the mags of holding, which allows your ammunition to feed directly from your weapon's ammo stash, essentially eliminating the need to reload your weapon. So I'm guessing this isn't a fuel upgrade, but there's some activation that allows you to use this. I'm not really looking forward to this all that much, but I mean, still could be a pretty cool ability that comes in handy for some of the higher threat zones so that you could avoid reloading. It's just not anything, like I said, that groundbreaking compared to the Season 1 schematics. But then we have the Bloodburner key, which I'm actually looking forward to quite a bit since I've not really used the Bloodburner all that much in Zombies. I probably wrote it a good three times if I was able to find it, but this is going to be something fun in case you guys out there need to do that achievement, uh, which requires you to get kills using the Bloodburner bike. That bike could be hard to come across. There's no way to actually find the bike in Urzikstan. It's just complete RNG of finding it at a random building or a gas station. So this will be a key for the bike. So upon spawning in with it, it'll just spawn the blood burner in right away when you use the key itself, which I think is pretty cool. That's one that I'm looking forward to. And then lastly, the obvious schematic that we knew we were going to get is the VR11 Wonder Weapon. And this is helpful if you guys out there want to repair the escort while you're doing that objective or you want to repair a vehicle you're in. It has some cool secret abilities on top of being able to buff other players. It's a much better version of the Wonder Weapon than what we saw in Black Ops 1 Call of the Dead. But overall, these schematics aren't anything groundbreaking. So hopefully the contracts in the new Dark Eat the Rift aren't that difficult to do. But lastly, when it comes to the new Warlord carries, they gave us a pretty big description of what's going to be happening over at the Orloff military base. And it's cool that we're getting this DMZ-like update. The problem is there aren't any actual zombies near any of these fortress warlords. It's just a big challenge for what a reward rift. It doesn't really have any valuable loot in it at most a wonder weapon you can grab or a perk you can stash or a blueprint that the warlord is holding that isn't actually a blueprint unlock it's the weapon that you can use for the rest of the match there almost isn't a point in defeating a warlord unless you have to do that act mission or unless you want to just experience it for the first time upon launch but this will also be a warlord in rotation with dokubi and legacy it'll probably be exclusive to urzik stand for like a week then they'll just rotate the other ones back in it'd be cool i guess if there were multiple fortresses active at once but this is an up update that I don't see many people actually taking part in unless there are some decent rewards you can get from defeating carries. But again, with all of this happening on March 6th with Reloaded, you just got to cross your fingers for more surprises that have yet to be announced or just be hopeful that whatever Easter egg they add in tied to that new Dark Ether Rift is worthwhile and a pretty big enough update to keep us until hopefully a strong launch of Zombies content with the beginning of Season 3. Because if we just get this for Season 2 Reloaded, then nothing for the launch of Season 3. It's not going to be looking good for zombies, at least for MW3's sake, and we just got to hope that in the end it's worth it so that Black Ops 2024 benefits the most and that that year has consistently strong content updates for round-based and whatever other modes are offered for Black Ops Zombies. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on what's next for MW3 Zombies? I figured I'd make a video talking more about what people aren't really discussing when it comes to what could be a really cool Easter egg requiring you to do another fetch quest, putting items on those pedestals. I think there's more more coming to zombies versus what's been confirmed here in the blog post, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I think is going to be very similar to the season one offering. But leave all your thoughts down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.